All right, well, what's up, everybody? I want to welcome you to City Youth Online. Guys, I'm fired up, and I am super excited to preach God's Word to you today because we're going to be talking about something that I truly believe we all struggle with at some point in time. Honestly, I struggle with it. You struggle with it. Everyone that you know struggles with this. Honestly, I think everybody in this world at some point in time has struggled with this thought and they all have this in common. And it's this question of who am I, right? Come on, say it out loud. Who am I? And what's crazy to me is that we try so hard and we put so much time and we put so much energy and effort and emotions into becoming something or someone that we're not. I don't know if it's just me talking to myself or, or maybe you can relate. I mean, we put so much time and energy in becoming something that we're not. We, we, we have this idea and we have this thought process and we have all these opinions coming our way. We're like, I need to be this, I need to be that. And you're left with that question of who am I? And when you do that, when you try to be somebody that you're not, guess what comes with that? You get all the stresses, you get all the pressures. Now all of a sudden you have all these other expectations now placed on you of trying to be something that you're completely not. I mean, come on. Have you ever had somebody tell you at some point in time in your life how to live your life? how to do something when they really had no clue how to do it. Maybe you've had somebody tell you what you should look like and what you should do, where you should go and when you should do it. And you have these opinion after opinion after opinion after opinion. And we've become so open to other people's opinions that their opinions seem to be our only options in life. And my prayer, my hope today is that you will recognize who you truly are, that you will be able to break through the lies and break through the labels that the world has placed upon you and that you will begin to operate in the freedom and in the hope and in the joy that is found in Jesus Christ. And and that is my prayer for you today. And I think the biggest question and, and the biggest challenge that comes our way when we face with this question of who am I is this, is that we go searching for it in all the wrong areas. It makes me think of a a time where I was doing a side job painting and I know you can pray for me. I have problems, I have issues, but I genuinely love to paint. Painting homes, painting rooms, painting bathrooms, whatever, buildings. I love it all. Why? Because I'm a type of guy that likes to see progress. I can start a project and I can finish it and I see it happening all before my eyes. I think that's why I don't like weightlifting so much. I've been trying it for like 20 years and I haven't had much results, right? But I'm a progress type of guy and so I love painting. So after the work day, I would go and I do these side jobs and and uh, I, I had this job and I was working late at night and I decided one day to just bring my son Jaden. It gets kind of boring sometimes painting. And so I bring my son Jaden and just kind of keep me company and kind of show him some things and just have some father-son time. And so I give him my cell phone and I'm letting him watch his shows, his YouTube. He was watching Octonauts at the time and I think he's watching Kicking It. He's into the whole ninja thing. And, and I just start painting away and he's sitting on the couch and he's just in his own world. Well, the evening goes on and a couple hours pass and I decided I go outside, I had to grab some tools in my truck. And as I walked outside, I left the door open and I come back in and I start painting. I just keep going for it. Well, you know that feeling you get where you're like something's wrong, but you don't know what's completely wrong. Like your hair kind of stands up on the back of your neck and you're just like, oh no. And I'm like, where's Jaden? I haven't heard him. I haven't seen him. And I'm thinking to myself, I just lost my son. So I start yelling for him. I'm like, Jaden, Jaden, where are you? And nothing. I, I, I was freaking out in this moment. And literally I start, I go outside. I start retracing my, my steps. I, I run outside. I'm like, oh my goodness, I left the door open. He's running down the streets. Maybe someone grabbed him. And listen, when you're a parent, you're gonna understand this someday, but when you're a parent, when you can't find your kid for three minutes, 
It seems like eternity, right? And I'm freaking out. I'm going up and down the road. I'm going into driveways. I'm about to go door to door, knocking on people's doorstep saying, do you have my son? And for some reason, I run back into the house and I start yelling one more time. And, and I look to the corner and I see in the corner a little foot and it's kind of like bouncing a little bit. And, and I'm like, Jaden! And I run up to him and I grab him and I'm like, am I angry? Am I crying? Am I upset? Am I, I'm just all emotional. I'm like, but buddy, why didn't you like respond to me? And he, he said, I thought I was in trouble. And, and here's the thing. This is the picture that I want to paint for all of you right now because when it comes to searching for our identity and looking for our identity, this is what we look like. You look like I did. We're going up and down paths we're searching for it in all the wrong areas. We're going down roads. We're going down paths, driveways, avenues that we have no business going down. We're searching for it in all the wrong areas, going down roads that lead to nothing but a dead end when God's word says this is who we are. We look for it and we search for it and we work for it in all the wrong places. And take your Bibles right now and turn to Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10. And in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10, it says, for we are God's handiwork. We are God's handiwork. Go ahead, type that in the comments right now and say, I'm a piece of work. Look to your friend if that you're sitting next to. Text your friend. I don't care. Say, you're a piece of work, right? You're a piece of work. I'm a piece of work. We're all pieces of work, right? But, but we are God's handiwork, created. Now I got to stop here for a moment because I know that there are people watching right now that you think that you're only here by chance. Listen, you're not here by chance. You were created for a purpose and you were created on purpose. You are not a mistake. You are not an accident. You have purpose in your life. God took the time and he made you a masterpiece. You were created by God, by the hands of God. You're not here by chance. It's not a coincidence that you're here. You were created on purpose by the very hands of our almighty God. But you are God's handiwork created in Christ Jesus to do good works. I'm a piece of work, like I said, you're a piece of work, but we were created to do works for God. So why is it? I, I wanna ask you that question. Just seriously, think about it for a moment. Why is it though, that when it comes to our identity, we go searching for it and we run around frantically, like I was running around that day looking for my son, Jaden, going down all the wrong places, searching for it, lurk, lo uh, looking for it and working for it in all the wrong areas. And what I see happen a lot of times, not just in the next generation, from in adults, even up in people up into their old ages, we end up working for things like this. We work for popularity. We search for it and we look for, and we work for success. We work for status. We work for our careers. We work for a specific position and we're looking and searching and working for relationships and education and, and even perhaps fame, just to name a few. But what we have done is we have literally narrowed down the definition of what identity is to simply what we do. Listen, Identity is not based on what we do. And, and we do it. We do it all the time. When we think of LeBron James, LeBron James is what? I mean, come on. He's, he's, a, he's one of the greatest basketball players of all times. When we think of Adam Thielen, for all of you Viking fans, I'm praying for all you Viking fans, let's go Green Bay, right? But when you think of Adam Thielen, you think of, uh, he's a football player, right? When, when you think of Post Malone, either you think of tattoos, but, but you know that he is a singer. I mean, he's an unbelievable singer. He's an unbelievable artist, but they, that's what they do, but that's not who they are, right? And, and, and I think we've narrowed this definition of identity to what we do, but that is not truly who they are. Listen, there's nothing wrong with identifying with some things of, of what we do, but the problem happens and occurs when that's all that we become and that's all that consumes us and that's all we think about is what we do, because what we do is not who we are. And I'm here tonight to tell you that your identity isn't what you do or what you can do. That's not who makes us 
what we are. Because write this down, our identity has nothing to do with what we've done. Our identity has everything to do with what has been done for us right? It, God has done so much in us. We are God's handiwork. And from the very beginning, I love this story. In Genesis chapter two, it's the creation of man. And, and, and in Genesis chapter two, it says, then the Lord God formed man from the dirt, from the dust of the ground, and he breathed his life into his nostrils, and the man became a living being. And, and listen, I just got to pause here and stop here for a moment because we were all created from the dirt. And I think a lot of times what keeps us entering in and becoming who we are all supposed to be and, and from maybe getting involved in, in a community of believers or getting involved in a church or, or getting involved into God's word is we allow our dirt to hold us back. Listen, I don't care how much dirt you have. God is in the business of using dirt to create something beautiful. God is in the business of taking your dirt. I think the world tries to uncover our dirt and to just throw us down, but God looks to us and he sees us as dirt and his handiwork that he breathed his life in. So you can come just as you are. Bring your dirt, bring your sin, bring your baggage. You are welcome to be a part of God's kingdom. You don't have to change before you can experience all of God, but when you experience God, you're gonna want to change. So God's not intimidated of your dirt because he sees something beautiful inside each and every one of you. And, and for all of you that might be thinking of yourself a really highly, don't think too highly of yourself because at, at the end of the day, we're just a bunch of bunch of dirt. We're just a big bag of dirt, right? And so uh, I don't mean to come down on you so hard, but that's the reality. We are nothing but dirt. And, and I don't know about you, but have you ever made something or have you ever created something that you put so much thought and so much time and energy into it. And you, like maybe you're an artist and you're drawing or maybe you're into cooking or, or whatever it might be. But when you put work into it and when you put thought into it and you create something the way you want it to be exactly, what happens? You take ownership of that creation. And that's what God thinks of us. We are created so intricately, so beautifully, exactly the way that he wants us to be. You're made in his image. I'm made in his image. And he thinks the world of you. So whenever you think to yourself, I'm not good enough. I'm nothing but garbage. Listen, you're not garbage. You are God's creation. He knew exactly what he was doing from the very be getting, listen, you were created on purpose for a purpose to do something so incredible in this world. You are not defined and you cannot, your identity is not defined in what you do, but in what has been done for you. And here's the question right here. You might ask yourself, well, who am I? And here's the answer to the question of who am I? You are a living soul created by the very hands of God with his breath breathing into your life. It is flowing through your body. It is flowing through your veins. And by his breath, his breath, his life lives inside of you and he will give you the strength and it will sustain you through everything. Because here's the thing, young person, from the very beginning when God created you, listen, your identity is not something that is achieved. Your identity is something that has been received. From the very beginning, God placed something inside of you that only he could give to you. So it's by no surprise that the enemy, the number one thing that the enemy is after is your identity. Like he doesn't want you to realize who you truly are. He doesn't want you to, to tap into the potential that God has placed inside of you. He doesn't want you to recognize what you're capable of doing to, to understand that you are a child of God and he's really good at doing it because the devil will always tell you the lies and he wants to keep you in that state of mind of thinking that you're nothing, that you need to remain in a state of shame and guilt and worthlessness, that you're gonna amount to absolutely nothing. But here's the thing, the devil has identity issues as well because he thinks he's God. He thinks he's all powerful. And so he, he's going after God's creation to rip out the identity that he has placed inside of us 
because he has identity issues himself. He's a fake, he's a phony, he's a poser, he's absolutely nothing. And I think it's time as a generation of believers that we remind the enemy of what his future holds instead of him reminding us of what we are and how, how, how bad or terrible we might be. No, we are created in the image of the almighty God. He has placed life inside of us. His breath lives inside of us and that's what he's after, but he can't have it. He wants to convince you that you're broken. He wants you to com- convince you that you're defeated. He wants to convince you that you are stuck. He's trying to get you to feel like you're nothing but a failure. He wants you to believe that what you're up against and what you're facing is impossible. But that's fake news. And I got news for all of you right now. You might be broke, but you're not broken. You might feel a little bit down, but you're not defeated. You might feel stuck, but you're not staying there. What you're up against might seem impossible, but with Jesus Christ, come on, somebody, all things are possible. You are a child of God. I'm a child of God. Our identity has been received in him. It's not something that we do or something that we achieve. It has been given to us from day one. Come on, just say amen right now. Somebody you, somebody needs to hear this right now today. I just truly believe it in my spirit that the Holy Spirit is telling me that you need to understand that you are a child of of God, and I'm getting fired up, and I'm getting excited right now, and, and my, fo- my, my computer's actually buzzing with uh, my wife texting me right now. It's kind of funny about that, but uh, everything the devil is after, and everything the devil tries to, to label you, and everything that he tries to make you believe, it's all a condition. It's all conditional, and here's the thing about conditions. Conditions change. Conditions can be changed in a moment when you believe what God says and what God's word says about you. You might not physically be able to change the address that you're at, but you can change your attitude, right? You might not be able to change your, your, uh, your position and where you're at in life, but you can change your perspective. This life is the life that we've been given. You can't change the life that you have been given, but young person, you can change the way you live. You might not be able to change your life, but you can change the way you live because our identity isn't what the world says. Our identity is in what God's word says. We are God's handiwork. We are his masterpiece. We all belong and we are all part of the bigger picture. I always think of it this way. I don't know about you, but during uh, quarantine and I've enjoyed doing uh, puzzles. And I don't know if you like jigsaw puzzles or not, but I love doing jigsaw puzzles. One, Actually, one of my favorite things to do over the holiday breaks is to do the thousand, two thousand piece jigsaw puzzles. It's one of my favorite things to do. But one of the most annoying things in the world, I'm serious, one of the most annoying things in the world is when you're almost done with this puzzle and you're missing one piece. Come on, aren't you with me? It's like, man, you just want to like scream and just yell and punch something, but you're missing one piece. And listen, you are God's masterpiece. We are all a piece of the puzzle and you are important in God's grand scheme and his ultimate masterpiece. Without that one piece of the puzzle, it is incomplete. Without you, it is incomplete. You are important. You are fearfully and wonderfully made and God has a purpose for you. So don't go searching for your identity in the world. Go searching for your identity in God's word. Your identity is something that has been received. It is not something that has been achieved. Your identity isn't what you do, but what has already been done. And I hope this encourages somebody here right now. And I hope this finds you well, that you will recognize who you truly are and And today, I just believe that God wants to do something new in your life. God God is on the the move. He wants to use you in a mighty way. And I believe that he's just telling me to tell you right now to just slow down, to stop and recognize and, and take a good long look at how you're living your life. What are you searching for? Where are you looking for those answers? I believe that when you turn to God's word, when you open up the pages of scripture, he will begin to breathe life into you. and He'll begin to give back the things of your life that you might feel like you have lost. There's nothing you have done. You, you can't go too far. You can't hide from God. You can't run from God. God is right there. And I believe that right now, 
in this moment, I believe God is beginning to put back the pieces of your life that you feel like are broken and you're gonna begin to see the masterpiece of that he has created in you. It's a process. It might not happen overnight. I'll just be honest with you. Sometimes it takes years. Sometimes it takes a long time to recognize who we truly are, but don't go searching for it in the wrong areas. Well, I'd love to pray with you guys right now and, and I just truly believe that that God is moving and, and I love you guys. I, I truly miss you. Right now I'm preaching to an empty room, but I'm thinking of all of your faces. I love all of you seniors right now. I know this isn't the way you intended your senior year to end. Um, for all of you athletes, I know there's some of you that were really hoping for your final season in baseball or track, work, waiting on scholarships. Young people, we love you. We're praying for you. We're here for you. There's not a day that goes by that I don't pray for you guys. And so know though that your identity isn't found in that what the world can offer, but only what God can offer. Will you pray with me? God, I thank you so much for your word. And I thank you so much for the opportunity to speak to this next generation. I pray wherever it is that they're at watching this, that they will feel your presence like never before. God, would you move mightily Lord, I pray that you will just direct them to your word and that you will begin to show them some of the answers that they have or, question, or show them the, the questions that they have. Give them the answers right now in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray that they will find their identity, put their hope and put their trust in you because everything else in this world is completely meaningless. We love you. We praise you. In Jesus' mighty name, amen.